Brown Lions sports coverage of Lovett Athletics is brought to you by the Beery Cummings Group of Dorsey Austin Realtors, Fate Point Advisors, and by Montag Wealth Management. Hello everyone, this is John Giarchitas with the Love Network. Uh, we are starting a little bit late here in wrestling. I believe we've got Thomas Robinson on the screen right now with a pin. Not sure which weight class. Uh, we are going to, I think this might be the last match uh, Lovett has against Holy Innocence as we are going to switch tables here and broadcast the final matchup <coughs> of the night, Lovett versus Westminster. And Steve Allen and Rocky Kaufman, class of 93, will be on the call. Uh, and I'll just remind you that any rebroadcasts of this uh, of the accounts and pictures of this game is strictly prohibited without the consent of the athletic director of the Lovett School. Uh, trying to read that off uh, off of nothing. I'm I'm trying to remember our our actual uh, show disclaimer from me uh, memory. And tonight we have uh, basketball, girls and boys going on at the school, as well as a varsity swim and dive meet. And we'll try and get you some updates on that. Uh, follow along with everybody on uh, Love It Athletics on Twitter and Instagram and momentarily we've got let's see so I can see that from over here it looks like maybe Kieran Boland currently on the mat against Holy Innocence um, and very shortly here we'll have some professionals on the mics
I mean, I'm, I'm, I am broadcasting. But it's just weird. Like, I'm sure. Except in a way.
most comfortable. I can unmute you whenever you're ready. Hello wrestling fans and welcome to the annual Buckhead Belt. I'm here along with my good friend and wrestling coach Rocky Kaufman. This is Steve Allen and we're here to broadcast the final event of the night at the Buckhead Belt, which is Lovett versus Westminster. Uh, Rocky, what do you think about the Buckhead Belt? Well, I have to, if we're, if we're being honest here, uh, it's probably a little bit less competitive this year than it has been in some, in some years. A uh, couple of these teams are a little bit down. We haven't always won this event, um, but this year so far, it hasn't been very close. We have given up uh, one match in the prior two dual meets, which we were not live for. Uh, wrestling against Pace and against Holy Innocence, uh, we lost one match. But Westminster should give us uh, some better matches this round. They should. I believe we're on a two-year Buckhead belt win streak, perhaps. This would be going for three, if I'm correct. Is that correct? I think so. I know that one of those years we felt like we should have won it and had a bad year. Was that, well, that was, three, four years that ago? That was going on. That was, th over, that was three years ago. So, okay. uh, so I believe we've won the last two. Yeah, we came down to the last match and unfortunately lost, uh, lost by just a couple of points three years ago. But we're on a little bit of a win streak. But I'll tell you, this is a great event because this is uh, the, the schools, the Buckhead schools, Love it, Pace was Mr. Holy Innocence a number of years ago. Um, we brainstormed that we really ought to be wrestling these teams. And what was happening is we were not... not the, with no consistency we, anyway. We were not always wrestling them because we weren't always in the same division. And we thought it could bring out some interest in the area. 
to have a meet where a lot of the kids and the parents could come out cheer on a lot of these guys know each other right same with right. buckhead baseball and nyo baseball uh, and and truth, football. truth be told we're in an era where there just aren't nearly as many dual meets as there used to be so you know th those who wrestled many years ago you remember most of the time when you're wrestling you're wrestling dual meets you might have a couple tournaments during the year then state at the end of the year uh, that's just not the way it is anymore like it, it, most of your wrestling is is tournaments just about every weekend uh you just don't see very many dual meets so it, it took a very intentional effort to make this happen and we have started off at 106 for love it it's patrick Smythe, and for westminster charlie smith and, and uh you, rocky can tell you a little bit about patrick Smythe. yeah patrick Smythe is a freshman he's been having a really good year so far he's been in the youth program a long time we've known this was a, a kid that was going to come up and uh be a point score for us at some point I'll tell you that I think that we've been a, a little pleasantly surprised, though. There's a nice quick pin for him. Um, you know, he's been good, uh, but he's small for the weight class, and that was thought that might be a struggle. He's, he's still small for the weight class, but he has grown considerably, and uh, he's had a really good year so far. I don't think he's had more than one loss, maybe two, but uh, yep, you're right. been very competitive for us. And now we have at 113, we have Jack Mixon and um, against Brian Schaefer. And uh, Jack's a freshman uh, who did a nice job for the middle school team last year. And uh, you can see he started off with a nice takedown right off the bat. And he's really, uh, he's got a, little, a lot of energy out there, which yes, I like he does. to see. It, did he come out as a sixth grader, seventh grader? When did he come this out for wrestling? This is his third year. So he, okay. he started in sixth grade. And last year really came on. He lost to a kid from Pius last year three times, I believe, during the season. And the last match of the year going for third and fourth at conference, Jack beat him. And uh, he just he never gave up, never quit. And, and the, kid, the kid has a motor. I think in a couple of years, like, this is a kid who's going to get a lot better. Um, you know, he's, he's all over the place. Sometimes he gives up little things because he's in constant motion. Well, it looks like we might score another quick six points for another pin. Lift that head. Don't give it. Don't change anything, and he should be good. Nice job here. Um, as, a, as a quick reminder for those who aren't regularly watching wrestling, might be logging in because it's arch rival Westminster. Six points for Love It. And our referee, uh, Brad, who we both know, um, for many years now, it did a nice call. And by the way, looked up at looked up looked up at us after the pin call, <laughs> which I found slightly humorous. He, he legitimately is one of the best referees in Georgia. I don't hesitate to say that he's been doing it for a long time. He's a great guy. Uh, he's super consistent, and um, always good to see him out on the match. You know, you're going to get a well called match. Um, but anyway, the, well, let me say just say. By the way, me saying that he looked up and all that. Brad's about as fair a referee as you're going to find across the state. He will call. There are times when it's like, hey, we know you. I can't believe you made that call against us. But he is as honest, forthright, Absolutely. fair, and a heck of a ref. Uh, so, so anyway, as I was saying, uh, point scoring for dual meets, three points for a win. If your wrestler wins his match, your team gets three points. If your wrestler wins by eight, more than eight points, or eight points or more, I should say, you get four points. Five points if you get a tech fall, which is where they stop the match because you've scored 15 points more than your opponent. And your team gets six points if you get a pin or fall. And let me just tell you, this is Alex Hyman for Love It uh, against Paul Rogers from Westminster. And uh, this is the 120-pound weight class. And we, if you've tuned in, ooh, he <laughs> an LZ. Boy, you don't see that very often. Um, I mean, it's got those who actually log in regularly, we have to sound redundant because we're constantly talking about how Hyman is definitely one of the most fun guys to watch on this team. But he just is. You know, and you have to keep saying it for the people who, who aren't always watching because you, you don't want to miss any of this. And a, also, if you've been around wrestling for a while and you've been in this area, Buckhead, you know that Westminster and Lovett have had some barn burners going back 30 years. Um, Maybe more. Um, well, I came to love it uh, 26 years ago, 
and we had a cup the very first year. It was a heck of a match. It came down to the last one, and they were they were battling it out when you were in school back in the early nineties. Yeah, thanks for reminding me. I was uh, how old you are. I, I was to blame for one of the losses that we took against Westminster. I didn't want to bring that up, but there are still people that talk about that. So um, still to this day. Yeah, um, I lost a match to C.E. Smith, who I had beaten twice in the weeks before, and uh, that match was the difference. Oh, that's got to hurt. Um, <laughs> so Alex takes and some rakes from his feet to his back, and... Uh, he's, he's toying with him at this point. It simply and put. Pink. Uh, nice win there for Alex Hyman. And uh, now we're moving on to the 126-pound weight class where Lovett has John Goodsell. Yeah, some people, uh, you know, if they're a lot better than their opponent, they like to just go out, take them down, pin them. That is not Alex. That's not Alex's style. That's not his style. He likes to go and toy with them for a little while, like a, like a cat with a string. <laughs> and for Westminster, this is Brody Kahn. Um, I wonder if that's true. Huh. Ooh. There were some there were some cons from Westminster back many years ago. I wonder if there's any relation. Well, that is interesting. You see some names like Good Soul, uh, John's dad wrestled for Lovett, and John's wrestling for Lovett. And every once in a while, you'll see some of these names come through the program, and uh, it's kind of cool to see long history and legacy. Yeah, John's dad, Steve Goodsell, was a state finalist, I believe. One of the first guys up on the old Hall of Fame board. Nice to see a little crowd here. Uh, Love it's got a little cheering section. Oh. And Going for the old fun. banana split. Haven't seen that in a while. <laughs> Didn't work. And you've got legs as long as John's and arms. Makes it a little easier. It's wiry. Hmm? Wiry. Wiry. There's like one person out there who actually saw that movie and knows that reference. I wouldn't be one I'll of take them. Take it. <laughs> I will say if you're interested to know, uh, Love It will be brought casting again, at least we believe we will, um, the area duels, which will be early January, first Saturday in January, I believe. But you check the Love It website, and uh, Rocky and I will be back on broadcasting that, I hope. What is the date of that? I believe it's January 7th, whatever that Saturday is, and I think we're home that day uh, for the area duels, but that will be, that is remain to be seen. A little crossbody ride. Doesn't look like it's going anywhere. It is January 7th. I'm just not sure. I think can, we're home. You can see that Westminster from Khan had his shoulders still square to the mat, so he wasn't going to get that crossbody ride to turn him. But now we've got those shoulders turned and have a chance. It's going to be tough. What you're seeing here, too, is that Lovett has a lot. This is a good, we have a good experienced team this year. And Westminster, I think, is pretty young, pretty green. I do think they have some kids up top. Pretty green, you say? <laughs> pretty green, yes. <laughs> Westminster green. Up top, I think they've got some heavier guys that, are, that have a little more experience. But down low, these lighter weights, we've just got a lot of experience, and it shows. Oh, there we go. Here's the pin. If you're watching and you've been watching wrestling for a long time but aren't keeping up with the rules, you might notice that he just pinned him out of bounds there. You are, with the change of rules, able to score back points and falls with their shoulder out of bounds with the new rules. Yeah, now this will be an interesting match. Um, we, they've got a guy, Robert Krim, who I've been coaching uh, with the middle school program for a number of years, and I know Robert Krim is pretty solid for them. And this is Will Vinci for us, and Will is a freshman, and we feel like he's pretty solid for us. So, so Will is a freshman, though, and he's, he's just come back from a, a concussion, so he doesn't have a lot of uh, gas in the tank, as they say. Yeah, so he's, he's filling in today. Ooh, that's tough. And he held on to the... Well, he held uh, on to the head a little too Will, long. Will Vinci here is actually one that I'm predicting is going to be a really good one for us in the future. Um, did really well for you last couple of years in middle school. Uh, was probably one of our most dominant wrestlers last year. Um, but he is a freshman. He's, he's been out. He's just came back. Had to fill in uh, for an injured starter. And uh, Krim here is actually the son of... Another crim that was a Lovett State medalist many years ago. 
the name sounds familiar. So I guess, as we said, we're seeing this, uh, we're seeing these uh, legacy kids. Will has. Oh man. Um, oh. See it. Yeah, he kind of got tossed on his head a little bit. Yeah, I got. It was more the shoulder. Was it the shoulder? That's uh, a bummer. Uh, Beth Garrett, our trainer, who, if you've been around Lovett Wrestling for a lot of years, you'll recognize that name. She's out there looking at Will. Man, I don't like the looks of that. Yeah, no. Well, I mean, the way that he got tossed there, something looked odd about it. It was hard to explain, and I couldn't, something did not look right. We would ask our hey, videographer to show it back, well, but we shouldn't. <laughs> if you can play with your headgear with both arms, though, it's not that bad. Yeah. So that's a good sign. Hey, look at that. He bounced right up. And I'll tell you one thing about Will. You got to play it up more than that, Will. We got a little talk about that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I will say, early on in this match, Grim looks like he's got more experience and he's tough. One thing that Will will do is he'll, he'll surprise you. He's He's got great hips. He's scrappy. He's scrappy. And... It'll be interesting to see if he can. It's actually a really good baseball hang. player, I've been told. Catcher. Mm -hmm. uh, his sister was uh, a captain of our of our softball team, actually. Heck of a, a softball. Senior. Player. Yeah, very good softball player. And uh, I found out his mom was actually a college track runner as well. So there's some athleticism there in the family. I do think he's a little outmatched here. I think the Krim is one of the. I think Krim is one of the best wrestlers on their team. Yes. Um, he's athletic. Ah, he's experienced. Getting that um, shoulder cranked. And by the way, uh, Will's mom was a Matt Lion. We went through this conversation last time. We got a match. A Matt made, as they used to call them. No longer. No longer. <laughs> up in Pennsylvania. Johnstown, where she grew up. All right, it's a way to fight that will. Yeah, you can tell. Uh, saved by the buzzer. <laughs> he's uh, he's working him over, and he's working that shoulder over. Yeah, I mean he's. I, I mean, uh, you know, good experienced wrestler. Your shoulder's hurting. Guess what he's doing? He's going right after he's it. He's working the shoulder. That's what I would do. You would. I certainly would. Since blood in the water, you go for the kill. Yeah. Hopefully, uh, Vinci here, if he winds up bottom again, knows he's going to go after that shoulder, keeps that elbow in, doesn't put him. Oh, oh, oh! oh. Kids, uh, pretty, kids, pretty um, yeah. savvy wrestle. Prim is. I thought Will had him. Yeah, I mean, so what's interesting is Vinci really hasn't been wrestling that long. Compared, I mean, we've got a lot of kids, a lot of experience on this team, um, and while he is athletic going against a kid like this he's probably out muscled a little bit but he's just he's got that kind of athleticism where you just never know where he might go sometimes he just feels a position but I think with a little more experience that Todd that throw he had he would he would have gotten that yeah you know that was a tough finish Grim did a good job good job uh, nice match by Westminster's Robert Krim well he had his first three varsity matches today as a freshman. He went two and one. It's not a bad day for a freshman. Not a bad day at Coming all. Coming back off an injury. All right, 138. Um, Some more Love It Legacy. Yes, we have uh, Jack Geegan, and I'm just checking. I don't know which guy uh, for Westminster, either Hunter Asqui, they've bumped up, or Jackson Bailey, or Henry Eccles. Or Lincoln Jeb Jeb Jebren. I'm not sure which Jebren, which of these it is. So, Jack Egan against Westminster. There you go. Jack is... Uh, oh. Looks like he's going to make quick work of this one. Jack's been doing a great job. Uh, wrestled all through middle school. And he's uh, had a great start to his senior he's year. He's looking for a three-quarter Nelson right there. We worked on that this week. Oh, tight. He needs to drop his hips right there. Right. Yep. There it is. <laughs> Worked on that as you, in the practice room. <laughs> the Rocco. Yep. As we like to call that. Named for one Rocco Maximus. Good job, Gigan. With my fist bump. 
All right. Uh, is that Jake Kennedy out there? It's a, it's a move that I used to do a little too often. The Rocco Maximus. All right. Jake Kennedy against Westminster. People look at me funny when I say that Jake Kennedy might be the best athlete on this team because there are certainly some guys you'd look at, and we've definitely got a couple athletes. But uh, Jake's been a nationally ranked tennis player. He's a junior, but he is actually leaving early to redshirt for our Auburn's tennis team next year. Um, we will definitely miss him. It's too bad we're not going to see him as a senior. Ooh. He really has wrestled very little in high school. Really? He's and had various injuries. Yeah, and he's also, you know, come late to seasons because he's off playing tennis all over the country. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do at State. You know, I think he's – I wouldn't say that he's underranked right now. I want to say that he's ranked, what, fourth, fifth in State. I forget, but the reality is nobody's really seen what he's capable of doing. And there's another three-quarter Nelson. Ah, didn't get that weight in the right spot. To We're going to transition to a cradle. Not kind of, but not really. I One agree. Fake cradles. Mm. Uh, I actually agree with you. I think underranked, but part of that's because he really has had a hard time finishing an entire season. He's right. had some injuries. He hasn't uh, had the matches to prove it. So, you know, uh, I'm not complaining about the ranking. I'm just saying that I think that he has a lot of potential upside from where he's ranked currently. Two in a row. <laughs> All right. Nicholas Moffitt, uh, one of our state finalists last year. And he's uh, Nick Moffitt works about as hard as anybody. Just one of those kids that kind of is always doing the right thing. Yep. Westminster's weighed in a ton of guys at 150. Straight double legs to a power half. Yeah. Lost the arm. Ooh. It's gonna be, you can hold it right shouldn't there. Shouldn't get a oh, pin from there. He was about shouldn't get a pin. The referee was about to hit it, and I think he's going to yeah, hit it. It's oh, close. Man. He needs to, he's got way too much space is yeah. the reason I'm saying he should. It, it's going to be tough to finish a pin. Wow. Interesting. The referee literally raised his hand to hit it. That's, that, you know, it's interesting how he kind of is going to call it, but the guy pops off his back. It happens. It does. Looks like we got some blood, perhaps. Yes. Sometimes you see these referees, uh, the guy gets off their back and they slap the mat anyway. They decide that they're done. A little, <laughs> little blood time. Yeah. All right. During this blood timeout, um, you see... Kip Thompson and Billy Malnado over there talking to Nicholas Moffitt. And I believe there's five minutes of blood time that a wrestler gets. And so they uh, rarely does anybody bleed out, as they say. That's a lot of time. All right, back on their feet. 7-1, Nick Moffitt. This is... Uh this is one where it's clearly a mismatch. I don't expect to see this match last all that long. And we're going to go straight up. Straight to his back. That ought to finish it. That's a crowd pleaser. It is. It is. Uh, Lion Wrestling fans, the Love It Wrestling team, will next be in action at the Knockout Classic in Ocala, Florida, I believe. Uh, That's in, a big time tournament. In what December 21, 22, somewhere in that range. It's uh, finals week December this week. December twenty one is in my head, but I don't know. It's a two day tournament, so I don't know. Yeah. That's first day, second day. We went down there a few years ago, back in the two thousand twelve thirteen year. Was the last time I believe we attended that knockout tournament it was tough then and i believe it's tougher now so ian here is one of our younger less experienced wrestlers um he has improved a lot since last year he's good friends with chris mance you know one of our one of our stars a defending state champ um and he spent a lot of time trying to get better at this sport um a sophomore this year. If he continues to improve at the rate he, that's what I 
I believe he's going against Sam Rivas if this is, they weighed two guys in, but I know Rivas is one of their better wrestlers. And uh, that was a nice little Name rings a bell. Little fireman's dump right there. So that was a nice takedown. Indeed. And us. As we talked about a little while ago, while his shoulders may be out of bounds with the current rules, a fall still can happen. And he's got him tight. That's going to be tough to get you out of. You usually see where the pinner is also out of bounds. Um, as long as yeah. one of you yeah. has your feet in bounds, though. Yeah, you just don't usually see that. Usually the pinner is in bounds. In this well, case, he's out. one of the reasons that's also more unusual is while you can be out of bounds, bounds like Westminster is, if they start hanging off the mat or in tournament situations, if you know, if it seems like they're in danger, a referee can stop at any time. But unfortunately, he's got a good amount of room over there to work with. He does. He does, indeed. Surprising that he's not. I wonder if Mr. Referee's hands were up. There it is. He was waiting to make the call. That was a nice, a nice, nice finish. One of the guys, if you're, if you were, if you've been paying attention, you're unfortunately not going to get to see Russell today. Is our defending state champ, Kale Kuski. Um, I don't know. I don't actually know exactly why. He's had some lingering little things. Nothing that's going to keep him out long. But um, I think everybody felt like. You know, a week off would do him some good. Does that sound about that right? That sounds about right. I think okay. what they decided was a week of a uh, little bit of rest for him, getting ready for that knockout classic that I mentioned uh, down in Florida, that this would be a good uh, rest up for I him. Feel like I've, I should actually know the answer to this as to what's going on with him exactly, but I don't. Uh, Chris Mance for Love It. Looks like he's going against Mac Thompson, perhaps. Chris Mance is a sophomore who's a defending state champ for us, and uh, he's he's one of those guys that 65. would do well in any division. He's tough. And he was coming back from an injury. He went to a summer tournament um, in uh, Super 32, I believe, and uh, got his knee dinged up a little, his hip. And so he's just been coming back. I believe it was back. It was back? Well, yeah. I saw the match, actually, and I, I thought it was somewhere in here, but might have been his back. Um, but he was there competing because that's what he does. And he actually won the match, limped off, and didn't wrestle anymore after that. There's another pin. All right. So obviously, if you're a Lovett fan, you're liking the score. Now we have, uh, you haven't been able to, if you're online, you haven't been able to see these matches. But we have what I would call the uh, MVP of the day so far, Thomas T. Rob Robinson who's won two big matches against Pace that and There have been some back-and-forth battles, for sure. They Very weren't much so. easy. You know, I might have gotten off on my weight classes. Um, maybe they just bumped some people Wait, up. Man, we're, we're really, uh, <laughs> really going after that. Uh, what's funny is I really could have never pictured T-Rob, as they call him, Thomas yeah. Robinson, Doing a bear hug, but he hit one earlier for a pin. And uh, I guess he's getting excited about it, and he's going for it again. All right, so this is 170. So they must have bumped somebody up. Just not sure which guy this is for them, but T-Rob is wrestling 70. For us. And 75. I get my weight classes all mixed up. Thanks for correcting that. They changed them this year. I haven't memorized them yet. I really should. But you know, when you're dealing with uh, middle school weight classes, every five pounds is a weight class. You know, I do feel like in our era, things changed on occasion. By the way, this match is starting to go the way the last couple have. A little back started, and forth. Yeah, started off in trouble. Oh, look at that. If he gets a win Look at that. I love that cradle. Long arms. Long arms help. I'm calling him MVP of the day. He gets some kind of a t-shirt. Billy Maldonado needs to buy him. the. He needs to be the Otters Athlete of the Week, which, by the way, <laughs> I noticed it. Uh, Aiden, hey. one, Aiden Bear Coffin was athlete, Otters Athlete of the Week. This you you had to week. say that before he wrestled? Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Dang, Thomas Robinson, he is the wrestler of, the, of, the, of this tournament. Yeah, my joke about that with, with Bear, as we call him at home, and actually most of the team calls him, is uh, I'm pretty sure he's craving one of those chicken boxes right now. I was hope, hoping to see a good match. That's one of their better kids, I believe, right there, their 190 pounder. Indeed. Um, Which we could see later in the year because Westminster is now in our same division and my son Bear Kaufman here is going to be heading down. So uh, one of one of Westminster's best wrestlers. This is, and this is uh, 215 right now. Bear could be could be uh, hitting heads at arrow area. Looks like uh, this is their... I'm going to say that I'm okay to just keep on with this one. You sure you want to stay on? Okay. <laughs> Rocky tends to not like to uh, broadcast when his son is wrestling, which I do not blame him for. Uh, sometimes been in that sometimes it gets a little stressful, and, uh, you know, i got to get somewhere I can yell. And... and he does yell. So far, it looks like it started out well. I think this is going to be a low-stress match. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, we've. <laughs> for, uh, for those of you who haven't taken a um, academic final in a long time, you should be glad because next week is finals week for both I imagine both Westminster and Lovett wrestlers. So you can be glad you don't have to go home and study for a final, which a lot of these guys they probably won't be doing either tonight. So if there's one thing I could say about my own son, he might win some matches, but. Uh, he is not going to beat Hyman out for the most exciting guy in the team. Just isn't. No, he's not. <laughs> he was always meant to be a heavyweight. Yes, he he has got the classic heavyweight-ish style. It has served him well that he's gotten quite large. He's a large human. I'm going to rub yeah. that cross face in there. I'd like to see just a basic power half. Just something. Or how about a ah, barbed wire? How about a butcher? <laughs> oh, Michael Smythe would be so excited to hear you call it that. <laughs> uh, I think this one's about to end. Meanwhile, all the glasser crads are going, what is a butcher? It's a barbed wire. It's <laughs> Mike Smythe wants to call it the butcher. We've had a few arguments Come on. about that. And there it is. And we've got one match left. It is defending state champion Christian Bell. He is a junior. Remind me, what did he? I think he was fourth as a freshman. Does fourth that sound as right? a freshman. Or was it fifth? Fourth or fifth? Fourth, I believe. Okay. First as a sophomore. He is wrestling heavyweight. Uh, he will not be. He oh, that's too bad. He only weighs 217 pounds, but until Bear drops down to 190, he's... Uh, He's been undefeated at heavyweight. Final score, 66, love it, 18, Westminster. If you're listening from Westminster, uh, bear with me for a moment. Boy, that feels good. <laughs> <laughs> They're probably not listening if you're a Westminster hey, let's see. None, none of them are listening to us. That's true. We That's love you. We know you. We know a lot of your kids. We just like beating you. And you like beating us. Let's just admit it. <laughs> Thankfully, at least in this sport, Hasn't happened much lately. Hasn't happened a while. So, Rocky, it's been a pleasure. Uh, once again, I believe we'll be uh, broadcasting in... Oh, there's a good look. Uh, once again, we'll be broadcasting, I hope, at the Area Duels in uh, early January. So stay tuned. Tune us in. And uh, over and out. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Online sports coverage of Lovett Athletics is brought to you by the Beery Cummings Group of Dorsey Austin Realtors.
Baypoint Advisors, and by Montag Wealth Management.